can do it. Portion. Okay. Boom. All righty. We got ZBrush here. Um, we're supposed. Well, we're not supposed to be, but we can do some mythological creatures this month. That might be kind of neat. Let's see if I can actually finish something instead of what I did last month. Let's see. White lady, kelpie. Ooh, that might. Ooh, that might be kind of fun. So, let me go ahead and pull up my usual sources here. YouTube playlist, art station page, my profile, and also ZBrush 2021.6 right here. So I'll be linking yeah. you here yeah. every once in a while because ZBrush 2021.6 is coming out sometime today, I think. So keep your eyeballs peeled for that. A lot of cool features coming up in here. So we won't be able to use them this morning because it hasn't dropped yet. But um, on my stream Thursday, I will probably end up doing something with that. That would be pretty fun. So anyways, let's get back to what we're going to make today, which can change on the fly. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. What do we want to make? What do we want to make? Kind of going between, hey, I'm doing good. Let me know what you guys want to make. Because <laughs> uh, 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 I'm just kind of looking. Again, I'm a little, ooh, what was that? Pig-faced women. Hmm. Human body but the head of a pig. Well, we can do that one real fast. Let's do that one real quick. So if I go over here to my streaming... We were doing, what was the name of it? It was, ah, that's Turtle Power is what I have it under. We got Bebop. So we can grab this, but it was Pig-Faced Woman. So we can also go in here to the, uh, do we got anything in our tool palette here that might be appropriate? We got the Julie body, female full body here. Um, I also have a CGMA body we can load up. So I have a, a base body. Actually, you guys can have this base body too. It's not anything special. But I'll load that up here. And we'll drop this down. And let's go back into here. So if I wanted to steal his head, let's go ahead and alt tap that sub tool. So I don't have to go and search through here. I'm going to go into solo mode here. And I want to just pop his head off. Now, he does have a polygroup for this. However, he also has subdivision history. So I don't want to lose a subdivision history, but I just want to borrow his head basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control tap to mask this out. I'm going to go over here to, you know what, is this going to work? I was going to say we could cap this, but I can free subdivision levels. Ah, we can do that too. Okay, so we have this here. I'm going to say delete lower, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then I'm going to say reconstruct subdivision history. And then we'll get all the way back. Now, if you were going to do this not that way, I would say go down to the lowest first, select the polygons you want, ma uh, go up in subdivision history, mask them, and then delete them. But because this polygroup was made on the lowest subdivision level, that worked. Um, so now here's what I have. And then I also want to cap this geometry. There's a couple different ways I can do that. Um, one way is a little bit different. So one way I could do this is I can control tap. Well, one way I could do this really easily is go into free subdivision levels go in here and I could say close convex hole and just boop, close this hole hit control W here and then now I've got this pig head and then if I go out of free subdivision levels basically going to free subdivision levels goes to the lowest subdivision allows you to do whatever you want to to this thing and then it'll go through and reproject uh, your high back um, and sometimes it does okay sometimes there's a little bit of artifacts um, and in this case it did okay now this is a symmetrical object so let's hit X to go into X symmetry here and we got a pig head and then I can literally uh, I mean I, I could make this an insert mesh brush but I'd have to reconstruct subdivision history again um, or I could just go in here and I could just append my head here so these may be living in completely different spaces that's okay I'm just gonna go in here uh, deformation unify and then we'll go in here Let's hit X to go out of X symmetry, go to the middle, and then we'll
W E. That was weird. X symmetry. Go in the middle. Scale this down, and now we've got something like this. Now we could also sew up uh, this neck to that neck if you guys want to do that. We could do a leprechaun. I don't know. Was that? I was just afraid that that was going to be like too obvious, but we can certainly do that. I have a um, I have a base body we can kind of use for that from last month's live stream. Let's see, view, details, date modified, posed, not posed. Kind of have a Wall Street bets Cupid going. We could start with that maybe. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Lean green, uh, mean fighting machines. That's exactly right. <laughs> Undead night, well, I mean, I know they got a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, 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 you know what? Let's do, let's do this. Let's go in here to images. Let's see if anything pops out at me. That would be like, that kind of has to be two things. It has to be um, something very easy for my simple mind to make in a short period of time. And, uh, you know, we could, we could dress this guy up. We could have a little bit of fun with it. So cool um that started on youtube that's not good i got my well i got something set up right because it's streaming somewhere <laughs> oh okay hmm oh that's weird i didn't step on anybody did i i went to zbrush live and there wasn't anything going on Let me check, let me check. I mean, I won't know how to fix it if something's wrong, but I can at least take a look. Okay, so ZBrush Live, it's here. Uh, that's going okay, to... ZBrush Live is here. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and say we'll start with something like this. Although, okay, I'm going to pull up some reference real quick. We're going to go to my artist folder on my on my uh, hard drive here and I think we have some leprechaun reference we can kind of pull from maybe I thought we did I mean I guess I can just google it too but we can essentially turn this guy into some sort of a mythological creature leprechaun's the goodest thing as any I suppose and Dang, I thought for sure we would have something in here, but I don't. We got a lot of cool reference. I mean, I guess a leprechaun doesn't have to look like anything particular. It just has to look like a leprechaun, so let's do this. Images. All right. So a lot of this is probably going to come from the movie and or uh, looks like um, the Marvel character, maybe a Marvel character. All right, so let's get cracking. Um, we have a smaller base body here that we can go ahead and use and we can modify this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't need any of this other stuff. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say delete. Oops, delete other here. Oh, we're just kind of left with this. Now, let's go ahead and thin this body out. So we're gonna go down here to subject level one and we're gonna mask the head because I want that to stay fairly inflated here. Invert that mask. And also the hands, we can probably leave alone. We may end up elongating those. And after I mask something, I usually just control tap, just kind of soften it out here. And then the feet will I'll leave alone here. Okay, and then we're just going to go down here, deformation, deflate, and we'll go ahead and deflate it up, and that'll be the start of our body here. Now the head is probably going to have to make some changes unless we wanted to make a child head proportion uh, leprechaun, or I can even just put another head on here. We could maybe play around with that. We could maybe start a Dynamash or 
uh, Sculptors Pro and then just throw the head on there uh, later. Um, 2021.6 comes out, I think today. I'm not exactly sure what time, but I think sometime today. <laughs> cool. Hey, from Brazil. Let's uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so we got a weird little base body, and I kind of like that little belly it has. I think that'll be good. Now, like I said before, we can start with a completely different head. So let's go out of edit mode here. Let's say switch, control N, and let's go ahead and just grab, you know what, we don't need these these ones here, let's say delete all. I always like to clear out my, my scene while I'm working, so I don't have a bunch of stuff over here. Let's hit the comma key, let's go into tool, let's grab the average male here. I'm gonna say, you know what, average male, I'm going to take all of this. Let's say delete hidden, and I'm just gonna do a quick unify, throw that right in the middle of my scene, and we can just kind of start with this. So first thing we need, is some eyeballs. I'm gonna to toss some eyeballs in here. We're gonna say split mass points. And of course that was with an IMM brush. It was a custom IMM brush, but you can go to insert mesh um, primitives. And you can just drop in your own spheres here. So that'll give us a good enough start. Of course you can start with a just a sphere, DynaMesh sphere if you wanted to. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start with this. Um, I don't suppose you know what, I'm going to be pulling this thing around quite a bit. So I'm going to help this thing out a little bit. I'm going to say, go ahead and say close holes, deformation, geometry modified topology, close holes. We'll do a quick mirror and weld. And you know what, if we want to give ourselves a little bit of working room, I can hold down control and tap and then control and drag that out so we can get a little, little bit of a lip going in there. And then we're going to turn off perspective. And we're going to go in here and we're going to say DynaMesh this at a slightly higher resolution than that. Let's go in here, resolution. Crank that up a little bit and then Dynamesh. That's all, all, all of this stuff is my custom menu. It's super easy to make. I guess I can show you where that is. Uh, anybody who's seen my streams before already knows all this. I apologize, everybody. Um, ZBrush 20, no, you can go in here and you can grab like, you know, ZBrush 2020, what's new, 2021, what's new, all the what's new stuff and a bunch of other playlists that are in here. However, this intro to ZBrush, I might have a new intro to ZBrush coming for you. Oh, I have the videos recorded. I should just throw them up on YouTube. But here's a bunch of ones to get you started. Um, if you're brand new to ZBrush, you can check that out. And also on my ArtStation page here, it might be a little easier to navigate. You can kind of see the thumbnails a little bit better. And then when you click inside of these, uh, up here in the upper right-hand corner, there's a bunch of videos you can go through to get caught up in the new features, etc., and some other goodies in there. So you can check that out. And so in the meanwhile, in the, in the meanwhile uh, we got a head going here, and we can start modeling our leprechaun thing. Um. <laughs> yes, there is a lot. Of, yeah, so the hard surface stuff you can do. So they have a new mesh project, mesh project brushes, and mesh balloon brushes, and stuff like that that look uh, really cool. And then the, even the new um, curve snake cut curve brushes, you can use those as hard surface brushes too. So, and. Well, I'm not gonna get into it. You you guys have seen the live stream, so I can't use it, so why wouldn't I talk about it? So let's go down here and let's turn down my Z intensity on my smooth brush here a little bit. And is there a head I wanna match? We don't wanna do the Lucky Charms box guy, do we? No. Yeah, I'll just we'll just kinda wing it. So first thing first thing that's gotta change is these ears. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say mask pin and we're gonna grab these ears here, control tap to invert that mask. W, go to Mash Mesh Center, that little teardrop icon. Uh, make sure you go over here to LSIM so your ears don't do this. And now we can scale across this local axis. We'll just go right from that auditory meatus. And we're just gonna scale the hell out of this. So that'll be good enough. And we're gonna grab Move Accu, which is oh, Move Brush with uh, Accu Curve turned on. We're just gonna pull to a point. That's the Move Brush with Accu Curve turned on. So we got our little Spock ears going. Let's go ahead and flare these out just a little bit. And that'll be good enough. Now, uh, this head here, let's go ahead and let's dome this thing out. So I'm going to go in here to lasso. Yoink. Yoink. Control tap to kind of blur that out. In fact, if you want a really blurry mask, you just back this off and then use mask lasso. And regardless of your subdivision history, it'll give you a nice blurry mask here. Invert that. And again, let's go ahead and pop that right into the middle down here. And let's inflate it a bit. 
We want a little bit of a big head, and you know what? Let's kind of widen out a bit too. That'll work. Now his eyes got moved a little bit, so we'll go ahead and pop those on back. Over here. All right. So we got this, we got this. Let's go ahead and redynamesh so we can fix some ears a little bit. And uh, the mouth here. Let's go ahead and go into our Damien standard. And let's go creepy, creepy movie leprechaun here. So this is going to look a little jokery. Uh, we can go ahead and widen his mouth out just a little bit here. And. Give it a little bit more draft again, just using that move accu because you can kind of pull into corners here. And if we want to open his mouth, we can. I don't actually might be easier when you go in here and end up making a geometry of the mouth back here. So let's go ahead and we'll carve in a little bit here. So we're gonna just carve in, maybe use our standard brush to kind of dig in a little area. We can put some teeth in here. It's gonna look a little bit weird at first. Uh, let's also go in here and turn off our lazy radius. So again, just kind of dig this in here. There we go. And then we can go ahead and start uh, building this back up. So that way we can uh, put some put some teeth in there, tongue if we wanted to. We'll go ahead and build this chin out a little bit here. Let's go ahead and really kind of push that chin, push that. Uh, nose a little bit here. We'll go in here with our Damien standard and we'll kind of start do this look a little Freddy Krueger go through here and we'll kind of start digging in with our Damien standard where we want this stuff to go. Let's go ahead and give them a little bit bigger of a, a brow ridge here. You know we don't have to do an evil leprechaun but but also why not? I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and build in uh, a little bit of a Little leprechaun thing going here. So we'll go ahead and put these cheekbones and maybe make them a little bit more gaunt. Let's go ahead and flare this jaw out a little bit more. You know what? It's going to go on a kind of an emaciated body, I would think. So we'll go ahead and thin that neck out too. So now he's looking very little orc like, I suppose. That's all right. And we'll go ahead and do tufts of hair and maybe even a little hat, a little pipe, a uh, little shoes with a buckle on it. And that'll be the start of this thing here. Let's go ahead and we'll give it some. He didn't get a lot of sleep. So we'll go ahead and knock those in there. Alrighty, and again, that's mostly just standard and Damien standard brush. And let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit too. So we got we got our mouth going, and we can go through here and we can pull this up and around. And then we're gonna go through here. We're gonna hold down an Alt on our Damien standard brush, and again, we'll just kind of pull out that ridge to the lip. And then same thing on the bottom here. We'll pull out a ridge for our lip. Now this lip, it's kind of flared out a little bit. So let's go ahead and drop this back in just a little bit. And we'll need to separate this lip from the chin as well. So let's go through here. Again, Damien Standard Brush will push this back in. And then use maybe the clay buildup to go through here and give ourselves, again, just a little more surface area to kind of work with here. And for the teeth, we can go steal it from a skeleton. Also, when you want to move these things separately, you can go in here to your Move Brush, Auto Masking. And then down here under topological, let's change that range down to like 1.5 and just turn that button on. I usually like to have this open. Of course, you can go in here to BMT. That's move topological, and you can just use the topological brush when you want it. Um, that's up to you. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not the move brush police. All right. Let me get caught up here. Um, in depth zero measure tutorials, I never get to work nicely. I always just manually reach apologies. I've been talking to some pros who say they use zero measure because it's faster. Yes, um, I don't know if I have any in depth stuff, but you can use, uh, I mean, it kind of depends on what you want to. I mean, I do have, okay, yeah, kind of. So let's go in here. Let's see what I have actually. 
So here's hard surface Ziri mesh. Here's Ziri meshing uh, for head topology. Here's Ziri meshing for creating clothing. Here's Ziri meshing clothing you Z project and Ziri mesh for like clothing you may bring in. So I don't know if they're in depth or professional, but for what it's worth, there might be a couple videos in there that'll get you started on some Ziri mesh. Actually, we might do some Ziri mesh too. Um, mushroom pipe pot of gold. Yes. Let me copy these down because I will forget. This is what I need y'all for, thank you John Yu, is uh, my brain. It's a lot easier, let me see. Just open up Notepad. Bam. Because I'll tell you, streaming and thinking at the same time at six o'clock in the morning my time, uh, even thinking in general for me is a, that's real hit or miss, mostly miss. Um. <laughs> yes, everybody loves to bring up peel UV. Um, yes, yes, and I, I apologize if I missed something here. Uh, I'm, I'm notoriously bad at looking at the comments here. Cool. <laughs> yes, Ferengi, we could do that too. Oh, let's do it. So I've been watching Star Trek The Next Generation is probably my favorite show, well, at least top three of all time. And uh, I've never watched Voyager Deep Space Nine in any, in a lot of them. So I'm doing about two seasons into Voyager right now. So far, so good. Uh, our creases and groups is easy, but a lot of time it doesn't get nice topology. They can get my subtle forms. I say, well, I mean, that's the other thing too. Is it's not, um, it's not going to work miracles. It's not going to be, um, not yet, anyways. And with machine learning and AI, man, you better believe we're all going to be out of a job. But until then, uh, there are going to be some things you may have to go in and tweak and do manually. It's not all uh, going to be a one button solution. But boy, when it is a one button solution. It's going to be two things. It's going to be exciting because it's going to be like, oh man, one button solution. I can just do this with one button and no one likes to do it. So we can just go in and use those brand new tools. And then slowly you're going to see those tools become more and more robust until eventually we're all just going to like, you know, the director's going to go into his mic and say, computer, make me blah, blah, blah. And he's going to say, make me this type of movie with these actors and this pacing and this these shots. And it's going to go beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. And then you're going to go into the hollow deck, and then you're going to, I'm totally uh, nerding out on Star Trek this morning. Uh, and then you're going to go in, and then you're just going to, you know, you're going to actually live the movie that you wanted to make. Um, and all of our, all of our creativity will be done by machines. And we'll either be in some sort of a utopia, or more likely, um, in little matrix pods covered in goo as um, our machine overlords uh, do all the heavy lifting. We'll see how that goes. I'll probably be dead by then though, right? I don't know, things go fast, man. Things progress quick, we'll see. All right, so again, we haven't changed any resolution or anything. We're just kind of dialing in a little bit of, a little bit of madness here. And I think this is okay. Here's another thing too, I have a mirror that I was using for a, little thing I was doing. I can actually look at my face. So if we wanted to do, um, so while I'm pulling this up, uh, and let's go ahead and widen this out. I mean, I don't want to necessarily give my weirdo smile, but I can use my own face as a reference. So as things are moving around, I can kind of go through here and make those changes. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bad angle for me. All right. I think we've got a good enough leprechaun. So now we could go and throw this onto my body. However, we may need to make some changes to that body uh, that we're going to need to update. So let's pause on this real quick. Let's go ahead and hit nine on our keyboard to do a quick save. And we'll go back to our body here and let's see what changes we want to make. So first change I want to make is uh, these hands have got to be a little scarier than this, I think. So let's try going in here, and we're gonna mask out the hands again, blur it just a little bit, and we're gonna go down the hand axis. I don't know if that's really a thing. And then we'll go ahead and stretch these fingers out here. And you know what, let's thin these up just a little bit. Let's, you don't wanna deflate them as much as we deflated the body maybe, but we can deflate them just a tiny bit here. Uh, same thing for the feet. Now these are probably gonna be in shoes, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. We can at least go in here and give them 
a little bit. Now the hand or the foot is usually, I think on me is like elbow to wrist ish, you know, so about that long. It does. I mean, he can doesn't have to be, you know, uh, heroic proportions or anything like that, obviously. Uh, but something to keep in mind when you're scaling feet out. So yeah, we got something going here, and then we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this head. Uh, oh, it's already nicely zero mesh, so we can go ahead and say, you know what? I don't really need this higher subdivision level. There's not a whole lot of detail going on here. I want to keep, you know, we can change all this. And again, we're going to just cover it and close anyway, so I don't care that much. Um, let's create my Z intensity back up. Yeah, we can recreate those landmarks, I think. If we want to get some of those back, we can. Uh, I'm trying to think the best way to do this. We can store a point in history with the high res, or we can just delete lower, bring this in, dynamesh it all together, then zero mesh the final result. That's probably going to be easier, I think. A lot of ways to skin cats in this program. Let's go ahead and say delete lower, and I'm just going to go through here, control shift, trim curve, and we're just going to go shink and just take the head off. And do a quick, I always like to do a quick mirror and well, just because closed holes operations aren't mirrored. And then we got our head here. So now let's get this head into our other scene. Uh, really quickly, I can just merge these together temporarily. And in fact, I can even go, let's go to the top here. Let's say brush, create insert mesh, new. Go back here and I'm just gonna go right onto that neck there. Good enough. There we go. And we can just dynamesh this together. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll work. We'll go through here. And we'll kind of just pull this in again. We're going to kind of like the kind of hunched over look the original sculpt had. So maybe we'll build that in. So we're just going through here. And again, let's control tap to invert this mask. And we'll go through here. I kind of pull in. And when we made it thinner, it just, boy, it kind of made some of these proportions go a little wild. So we're going to pull these shoulders in just a tiny bit here. All right, so now we're going to go through here and we're going to sew it up. Um, by sew it up, I mean we're just going to voxelize everything together, which is essentially just a dynamesh. So there's our leprechaun guy. Is that right? Hold on. Let's try this. Let's go in here. Let's put this right in the middle. Let's go down to where the neck inserts, and we'll play around with this just a little bit here. So we're going to say E, local symmetry doesn't have to be on, but it's fine if it is. And then so we can go. That's a little big. That's a little. Uh, that's a little small. I guess that's just right. Well, good enough. So now I want to pop those eyeballs out first before we start rocking and rolling. So we're gonna say split hidden. That's gonna get into your subtool split menu. And then here, uh, we want to we want to possibly store this. Well, are we gonna make any major, more major changes? I don't think we're gonna make any more major changes. I think we're pretty good to go for a base body. So what we're going to do is let's dynamesh this at a fairly high resolution. Actually, let's do this. Let's put those eyeballs back in. I always like to do this too. Uh, deformation unify. Well, I've just got a single body here, so we're just going to be working at kind of ZBrush scale. You can also go into Z plugin scale master and do ZBrush scale unify if you got a bunch of subtools in here. But since I just had one, I did it the easy way. So now we got this and I think we're gonna be good to go so let's go through here and let's dynamesh this like I said at a fairly decent resolution here this is 1.905 million and we're gonna use this as our high res to project back to and again I just have to do mirror and welds I do that 90 times a session here okay I think we're pretty good this will be a nice high res so now let's go ahead and zero mesh this down if this is where we're headed Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. And I'm not going to do any Irish accents this stream. Sorry. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to pull sliders around. We got the new, uh, like John says, the new hyper real human thing. I could just pull some sliders, you know, whatever I need, change some dot locations. <laughs> no, 
da, 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 getting cut up here. I had a stream online skin with SSS material visually in the preview. Uh, oh, okay, that's a good point. So let's go in here to our skin shader. We want to throw a little bit of, well, first, let's, let's make this so we have turn this off. Now it's not going to be great. It's not going to be like, hey, I'm, well, I mean, hell, we can make it better. Uh, let's go in here to RGB. Just real quick pass. We're going to say color, fill object, turn our RGB intensity down. Let's go ahead and like ready up places where that blood is going to pull. Hold on just a second. Let me say, um, trying to find a better image. Uh, let's see, tools, size, large. Nope, that didn't work. Um, open image and new tab. Sorry, I know this is really super boring uh, and I apologize. I'm just trying to pull up some, yeah, this one. All right, here we go. This should be fine. Okay, I think I, I hit the mother load here. Um, nope, maybe not. All right, I'm just gonna make this bigger. Nope, okay, well, okay, I'm not gonna do any of that, so. <laughs> Uh, let's do this. Okay, that's good enough. So anyways, uh, we're going to kind of make this a little bit more skin-like. So again, where where the skin's going to kind of pool, we can go through here. We can add in you know, a little bit of reds through here. And then we can kind of maybe put in some a little bit of golden tones up in here. And then kind of in the stubbly area, you can go go a little bit cooler with this on males that can sometimes be a little hit or miss on females uh, also if you wanted to model this up we can go in here and say drag rect and just say give me a alpha 22 maybe and we can go through here and we can just kind of pepper in uh, some of this now i'm going to drop that rgb intensity down i don't want to do a whole like modeling pass so we're going to go through here we can put in some blues and we can put in some greens and just kind of give it a little again a little bit of visual interest and do it for the whole body too um, but we're not going to. So we're just going to go through here and again, just kind of break up that skin surface. And then we're going to go back in here to like maybe alpha 07. And again, we'll just go through here. And while we're painting, let's see, are we painting? Let's go back to dot stroke. Uh, while we're in here and we're kind of painting this, we'll go ahead and again, we'll use more golden tones up on the forehead here. And let's turn our RGB intensity back up here. So again, a little more golden tones up here on the forehead and then a little bit more ruddy tones in here on the nose. And we don't have a ton of resolution here, so we you know obviously we're gonna change this. And then a little bit more cool tones down here on the neck. And then back in here, we'll just do like a uniform pass. So now we've got kind of a skin buildup. Now, while we're doing this, if you wanted to preview kind of a SSS, subsurface scattering, we can go in here to our material, modifiers, wax modifier. Crank up the strength, it's gonna yell at you, and it's gonna say you have to go in here to the render properties, render, render properties, and then turn on wax preview. So that while we're doing this, again, you can see this kind of change on the fly. So we can go very strong wax, and then maybe just a little hint of wax. What is all this wax specular highlights? Fresnel, exponent, radius, temperature, wax temperature. Oh, you can cool it off. You know, I've never actually played with that. Hmm. So anyway, while you're sculpting, you can kind of see how much that subsurface scattering eventually is going to kind of kill your detail. So if that works a little bit better for you. Also, you can hold down shift and turn off RGB so you can leave your poly paint alone. And then of course you need to make sure you turn off RGB for all your brushes here. So that way, again, you can kind of work with Go through here, let's say, put in the little, oops, uh, get rid 
of that standard brush reset that back to the defaults there and there you go you kind of do something like that uh pretend make an updated sculpt course or your intro to zbrush uh, still awesome ah you know i might be biased but i think the intro to zbrush is still pretty awesome <laughs> Uh, but again, if you want the newer stuff, like if you want a newer intro to ZBrush type thing, that would be the ZBrush for concept and ideation, which here it's updated. Now this one is updated for 2021, but not 2021.5 or 0.6. Um, so this might be okay. However, if you go to, I mean, you can start with that first unit and then again, ZBrush 4R8, what's new? ZBrush 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2021.5, and eventually, maybe starting today, we'll do 2021.6. I'll throw it up there as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I got a space mouse over here. I'm using my Wacom tablet at the moment. Uh, yeah, Boston Dynamics, they're all coming. They're all getting there. Where are you from? Pavlovich, pretty common surname in Serbia and the Balkans. Um, I want to say possibly, and this is secondhand from my dad, some, some area in Croatia, although they may have spelled it with the C with a little line over it. Um, maybe, maybe Russia. I don't really. You know what's funny is my DNA test says I'm mostly from Wales, if that makes any sense. Uh... <laughs> Uh, any specific time for the reasons 21 to 6 other than today? That's all I know. I know as much as y'all do. <laughs> ZBrush will yell at you. If, if you if you try and go and do something it's, it doesn't want you to, it will it will yell. So we'll go through here and we'll clean up these areas just a little bit here. So we'll go ahead and put this helix here. Put the little, what is this? Anti-helix? Maybe? I forget. And then there you go. So yeah, if you want to sculpt with subsurface, and you can also turn off your texture if you want to. You can still have, you know, subsurface scattering on there, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, or you can just swap all over back here, and then this material doesn't have subsurface scattering on. So, and also if you want to change your lighting, this is where I go down to like the basic material, and then you can go in here because matte caps have lighting built in, so you can go in here to your light, and you can actually move this around to make sure everything's kind of reading a okay. The world is your oyster. Alrighty, uh, let's see here. Cool. All right, we got the whole body. We got this thing on here. Now, before I zero mesh this, I wanna make any major changes I wanna do. So let's go down here. Let's see if I can find any like creepy hand reference. Uh, not really. We can, we can just wing it. So basically on these hands, I think we're in good shape. We may do the nails separately just to make it uh, a little bit more controllable. So basically you put in your nail bed here with Damien Standard and then you can go on top of this and uh, pinky's a little bit a little bit light. Uh, Redynamesh as needed. There we go. So we can kind of build these nail beds in and then we'll say uh, okay, so we got this here. Now if I want to do uh, kind of a quick nail, we can go in here to BTO and we can literally just kind of draw on here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Good enough for me. And let's go ahead and clean this up. Yoink. And you can just, I'll drag out there. So we have some geometry here we can just tap off. Oops, tap. And that'll give us some geometry. We can say split mass points. And then we're going to go through here and we're going to kind of move this out. It seems like my cursor is doing something weird. And this will be a start of a nail. However, it's going to be a leprechaun nail. So we're going to go L sim back on and uh, pull that on out. And maybe shrink it on up. And you can use this as a guide for your new nails that you want to make. So we'll go ahead and bend this around a little bit here because these nails are going to be bent. A little bit and that could be the start of our nail. Uh, of course we can also go in here we can do turn on dynamic and then decrease a little two smooth set of three and that'll kind of give us a little nail preview. This looks a little thick so let's go in here and thin this nail out like so. So 
move, move, move. And these kind of streams too, or that aren't super technique -y until we get into like what he's wearing and stuff, uh, usually pretty boring because it's like, okay, you're gonna use the move brush. Then you're gonna use a standard brush and then you're gonna use the clay brush and then you're gonna be doing that for the next three hours. Okay, so uh, go, it's gonna go into solo mode here. Let's go ahead and you know what? Let's clone that off into its own subtool here. Let's hit nine, do a quick save. Uh, go out of X symmetry mode by typing X. Let's go ahead and grab this, say delete hidden. Uh, let's just hit F so we can frame this nail here and I'm just gonna steal this nail. Now is this nail what we're looking for? Maybe we need to go through here and maybe do a um, bend arc here. Oops, let's change this pivot. So we're gonna just alt drag on here so we can change that pivot down the nail. Go in here to bend arc, ah, much better. We can say here, let's change that radius here so we can kind of bend that nail around just a little bit more maybe. Okay, so we got a nail, we're gonna go to the top view here and we're gonna say B, create insert mesh, new. And then F to frame. And then all along these nails here, we can start dragging these out. Uh, however, they're not gonna be embedded quite enough. So we're gonna go in here to embed maybe negative 10. And now when we pull these things on, they should be a little bit closer. So these might be a little bit easier to go through and Finagle. Now, once you've done this one, control drag off, and we can go through here and start again, just kind of plopping these things on. W, control drag off, maybe scale this one down just a bit, place it on here, control drag off, scale it down because it's a pinky nail. Oops. That didn't go on there, did it? No big deal. Easy enough. And then one last one here. Of course, I did the thumbnail, right? Yeah, thumbnail's already on there. Duh. So go in here to solo mode. Let's go ahead and say visibility hide point and then delete hidden. Then we can take all these nails here. We can hold down control shift and just control shift tap them here and then we're just gonna say split hidden. So now we have nails all on one and then we got our body here. So we don't need to worry about nails. Uh, hands are looking okay. Let's go ahead and, oh, we have topological turned on. That's why it's being a little slow here. Maybe you have a lot of geometry it needs to evaluate having topological or any sort of auto masking turned on might be a little bit iffy. So I think we're good enough. Let's go ahead and ziri mesh this. Maybe make those hands a little bit bigger. Palm here. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Ah, yeah. Before we zero mesh, let's go ahead and, and again, we can back our camera way out and we'll say mask invert. Go here. You know what? Just drag from here. Okay, now comes the time where we want a zero mesh and how fancy do we want to get with our zero mesh. And another thing to consider is when I'm going to be doing something that's going to have like hands and head and there's going to be natural seam lines where I'm like, I'm going to put a shirt on him and I don't need to have a 5 million, 10 million polygon mesh here with a base body. I'd rather focus that up on the head or in the hands itself. Um, I know we did went through this whole thing where we sewed these together so we can zero mesh them, but I don't like the work like that. <sighs> unfortunately. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop this head back off. So we're going to hold down control and we're going to go in here and mask lasso. And this is, we're just going to work on this head separately. So we're going to kind of give ourselves a little bit of like a, a bust area. Let's go in here to mask pin here. Cool. And then, you know what, just to get us a clean line through here, let's try going in here to our edge loop, mass border. And that'll go ahead and give us, um, oh, you know what? We just hit a little, this got a little weak in here with that lasso. There we go. Edge loop, mass border. So now we have a head we can pop off. And then the hands too, 
Let's go through here. And you know what? For this one, we can probably just go in here and slice. We got one polygroup, right? Yeah. Uh, slices aren't going to be symmetrical. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room, too. But that's okay, because we can just do a, my favorite thing in the world to do, geometry modified topology mirror and weld. All right, so we're looking good. So now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this off, because I do want the base body uh, to have a little bit of overlap here. So I'm going to duplicate this off, and then we're going to take oops, the head here, and we're going to say split hidden. And then on the body here, we're going to take the hands, we're going to say split hidden. And then we've got a base body in here that we can play around with, or we can go back to our original base body. And again, we can steal a little bit more so we have a little bit of, uh, again, wiggle room or overlap. So let's do that. Let's say delete. Alrighty. So now we've got the head. So let's figure out how we want to zero mesh this thing. Or do we want to continue refining first? And let's go ahead and zero mesh it. Because again, I don't think we're going to do anything major to this. You know, if we're going to do anything like put horns on it that are growing through the skin or something, or we're going to be pulling things significantly, then I would say hold off on the zero mesh, but we'll get there. Um, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. You see you then. Uh, what do you do with your finished models? Could you sell them? I suppose you could. Um, I can't imagine anybody's going to want to buy mine, but if you're if you're good, yeah, sell them. You can sell it. You can do like 3D. You could sell your model to for people to 3D print if they want to, or uh, put it up on Turbo Squid or something like that. Put it up in your ArtStation or your Gumroad. Sure. I usually do tutorials if I have the time. I would just turn it into a series tutorial series that I would put on but not today. So again, I'm just kind of looking through to see if there's anything major I want to do before I commit to zero meshing. And of course you can always change your zero mesh. It's not the world's biggest deal, but I think, I think we're pretty close. So let's try this. Let's go through here and I'm going to do, hold down control and we're going to say, go into polyframe, but turn off line so we can see a little bit better. And in fact, let's go in here to skin shader four and let's start dividing this thing up into components here. Uh, in fact, this kind of goes way up in there. I'm going to I'm not trying to give Ziri Mesh or anything difficult to figure out if I can help it. So any areas I see where I can help it out and be like, "Hey, don't think too hard on this or don't Ziri Mesh is only it's going to think things are important if they're there. If they're not important, get rid of them." So this whole big huge eye socket thing isn't that important to me. I can modify that later. So and also I want to, I do, but I do think this overlap here is important. So I do want to have, again, I can go through and move these things around later as needed, but I do want to make sure that I have enough room for this eyelid. And also let's delineate this just a little bit more. Um, Cause again, I want zero mesh to have some nice concentric rings to kind of pull around here. And I'm going to soften these out. I can always pull to corners later, uh, but I don't necessarily want a ton of sharp corners. So this is a really good example. Uh, I'm going to dumb this down temporarily. Not too much, but like just round that off temporarily because I can, again, I can pull that back in. But when I go to zero mesh this, if you have any corners, it's going to want to build those corners in. And um, again, I'm just going to kind of do a little round off pass just because just because. Okay. I always get a little apprehensive during this part. I don't know why. So we're going to go through here and we're going to want to uh, put in some concentric rings around certain areas. So we're going to go through here and we're going to hold that control. We're going to mask in our eyeball here. And this is basically where we're going to tell Ziri Mesher, go ahead and give us a ring around this part of our eyeball here. And I always forget, I know there's ways to kind of do non-overlapping polygroups here. Probably with visibility is my best bet. So we're gonna say again, uh, edge loop mask border. We can go through and smooth these out as needed. Uh, but I'm gonna go through here, isolate that. And then we're gonna go through here. We're gonna put another concentric ring around the eyeball. Again, we're just gonna have this follow
right around here. Yoink. Doesn't have to be perfect, but something like this, and then do another edge loop mass border. Eh, we can't do that. Let's do, you know what? We can smooth these out later. Let's hit Control W. And I want to make sure we don't have any like stray groups in there because we can sometimes have that if we do is masking. So here's here's where we have an issue where it's like, oh, now we have that alias look. No problemo. Let's go in here to our comma key, brush, smooth. And there is a smooth groups here. So now when I hold down shift, it'll literally just smooth that line out in between. And that's important because again, we don't want zero measure to have to think too hard. It's just a simple machine. So we're gonna go through here and just be like, hey man, just give me a concentric ring around here and then another concentric ring around here. It doesn't have to be follow anything beautifully. I'm gonna go through and modify that as needed, but that's what I'm looking for. Isolate this. And uh, we're off to the races now. Where do I like? You know what? I'm going to use myself as a resource here, real quick. Uh, there's another really good one too. ZBrush for Illustrators um, has a thing on exactly this. But essentially, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. So we're going to do that Robin Hood, not Robin Hood, <laughs> Batman and Robin mask here. So we're going to say, let's go. You know, we kind of have that built in, don't we? We're going to go around here. And we're going to say you right up over the nose will be another polygroup. Oh, we also have a little bit of source for scattering. I guess we don't need that on at this exact moment, so we'll say strength of zero. I forgot when we switched to skin shader four, we had that turned on. Uh, yeah, so I think, again, we don't want to make it too difficult for zero measure. So we're going to go through here, and again, Let's go ahead and say <clears throat> uh, control W. And then let's go ahead and do around the mouth will be important. So again, and if you, these shadows are kind of getting in the way, you can go in here to render, uh, render properties to turn off shadows. And I think even down here under preview shadows, you can turn off deep shadow and that might get rid of some of the more if anything, or you can just change your, um, material to something that doesn't have or is a little more forgiving in those areas. So again, right around that lip line here, nice concentric ring. If you ever want to get inside of there, uh, does masking go with a flip? Yes, it does. So you can actually just uh, display properties way down here at the bottom, display properties flip, and then you can go on the inside see a little bit better. You can actually sculpt from the inside too if you really want to pull some wrinkles in deep. You can sculpt from the inside and then flip your normals back. There we go. And we'll flip these back here. Yay. So far so good. And again, control W and then a concentric ring right around here. We're not masking on the back or anything like that. Control W. And then probably around the nose here we need to do. I'm always I always hesitate to do that ring in particular. Um, what else we got on here? You know, these can all probably maybe even be one. We could have done this as just one group because this is going to be problematic here. Think, think, think. Maybe this around. Yeah, let's put those together. I don't want that. Again, I don't want these to have to think too hard. So this one we can actually do maybe visibility instead. So let's go through here. Isolate this one. Isolate this one. And then we're going to say Control Shift. Oop. Control Shift Lasso. Select Lasso Alt. And we're going to say you can all be part of one. Okay, and then again, when we hold our smooth brush down, we can literally just go through here 
and let's move them borders. And we didn't put in a crazy amount of detail. This corner is going to be problematic too. We didn't put in a crazy amount of detail, so it's not like if I smooth out a wrinkle, I'm going to be like, oh no. We can always we could have always gotten that back just by storing a point in history using history project or project all. Not a big deal, but again, we're not losing much. And then right around the nostril here. Yeah, that's probably going to be problematic. So let's continue this polygroup through here. So I'm going to say control shift, control shift drag, and here. I'll do this. I want this to be green. I'm going to pop this piece out here. Invert that. Go ahead and get rid of these. Hit Control W. And now they're all part of one polygroup here. Let's see how this fares. Uh, but first, let's go through here on the ear, because the ear is another place, well, especially along here. Uh, Ziri Mesher won't necessarily pick up that form very well, and then it'll, it won't project back very well either. So this can be a notorious problem area here. So we'll go through here and we'll say ear mask, control alt tap. There we go. And again, control W. And maybe one more. I'm trying to anticipate areas where it's going to be meh results. And again, this is this will be useful too if you ever want to go through and do multiple face poses or like expressions, uh, which might be kind of fun. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe I'll spend more time on that than you know, making a jacket or something. So we'll go through here. We can use thick skin and cloth deformation to pull wrinkles around. That might be kind of fun. So now, ugh, this isn't great, but again, we can fix that. Okay, control W and there we go. So we'll smooth these out and then we'll give zero measure a shot. Fingers crossed it does okay. We can do a little bit of cleanup work. I just don't want to do a lot of cleanup work. Another thing you could do is you can go in here, forgot about this masking, and you could say uh, mask bar groups border, control tap to invert that, and then you can literally just pull like a polish by deformation, polish by features, and polish those up. Um, but I kind of want to see where everything is. So if I see something, I don't like, I can fix it, and I won't be blind. All right, and then um, for our neck here, control shift slice, and we're just going to kind of put an edge ring right through here. So now we have our edge rings all set up. So let's go through here. I do want to get some of this detail back, so I'm going to hold down control and tap that point in our history so we have this to snap back to. Then we're going to go down here to geometry. Uh, boy, where am I at? Zero measure. Now I have keep groups turned on, um, but then I also want to, I have smooth groups down to zero because my groups should already be pretty smooth. Now, if they're not, or you want to, I don't like having smooth groups up to one because it'll really melt your forms, but maybe we'll turn smooth group up just a little bit here. Uh, and then target polygon count of maybe 15K adaptive size. I don't want to go all the way down to zero. Adaptive size zero is going to give it nice even quads. I don't need that necessarily. I don't mind it building in curves or edges where it thinks it needs to to maintain volume so we'll go ahead and say you know what down but not off and then uh, use poly paint you can use poly paint if you want to put less polygons back here and more polygons here even distribution is fine for me and then we have x symmetry turned on so we'll hit zero measure <gasps> uh, smooth groups brush again please i haven't seen it before and i can't find it on my brushes uh yeah so hit the comma key to open up lightbox and then go into the brush menu there we go so 
Kamaki Brush Smooth Groups. There's a bunch of smooth brushes in here and there's a ton of cool brushes in here that you won't have by default when you hit B. So check that out. So here's our, turn our line back on so we can kind of see the result we got. This is fine. One thing I do like to do is you're going to see underneath Ba, 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 ba. Uh, now, now our edges should be pretty smooth, so if I'm going to do anything more to this or zero mesh again, I am going to turn smooth groups down to zero. Um, what was I saying? We were looking at... Wow, my brain's already starting to blank, and it's only 7 o'clock. It's going to be a long day. Um, we have this. We were going to zero mesh it, and uh, we're going to zero mesh half. Oh, I was going to project back. So under sub tool here we have project you can do project history and that'll go ahead and project to that point in history um, if you want to and that'll go ahead and snap those verts back now these didn't verses didn't move very much because again these are pretty pretty close to what we had originally so let's go down here to zero mesh half and we'll zero mesh again and every time I do that it's going to average those vertices vert positions so we're going to go in here and we're going to see again do a little project history zero mesh half uh, here we're starting to get run into something that's a little problematic. We can fix that because again, I'm trying to go as low as possible. So if you want to keep going lower, go through here and you can kind of smooth these areas out and you can be like, hey, you know what? Let me just, let me just, let me just help you out here. So again, it, something, it grabbed an extra polygroup in here or something. We can hold down Alt and then Shift. We can make that all one polygroup here. And then over here, it got a little bit wiggly. So we can even go through here and we can say, you know what, let's collapse this edge here. Oops. There we go. Uh, we could even say delete this one. Now, I'm, I'm not saying like this is going to be our final topology. I, I'm trying to get this zero mesh haft halved as low as possible. Just give me a little more wiggle room. So now uh, we can say again, let's project history. And this one, we can maybe just say, you know what, zero mesh same. And that'll give us uh, kind of another pass. You can also hold down Alt and Zero Mesh, and that'll give you a different midline algorithm. Uh, the midline I actually don't mind. It's just the rest of the mesh. It kind of did something weird too. So there we go. Uh, the only things I don't like is around the nose. This here is going to be iffy, I think. And you don't, I mean, I guess you don't want to go too low because your lowest subdivision level will be, won't have enough information in it. So you run that risk. But I think, I don't think this is terrible. Um, although I do wish I had this corner not in there. Let's go back. This is actually okay. I've got the concentric rings in the mouth. There's not too much geometry to worry about. This is fine. This is fine. So let's say this is our topology. But again, you can you can finagle your way to whatever topology you want. And keep dropping it down and go in and do manual fixes. Uh, we're not going to do that. One thing I do want to do though is I'm going to go through here and we're going to cap this off. Close. I don't want an open mesh on here necessarily. So, we're, but I also don't want to do like a thickness and have to worry about you know, a bunch of geometry in there, wasting space. Oops. Let's try that again. Let's close this off, and I'm going to hold tap alt to give me a new polygroup here, because I don't want to share polygroups with anything. Hit control W. And even this one, again, we can hold down um, control tap this polygroup, and then control drag out an edge ring, just to give us a little bit of wiggle room here. And again, I'm going to say control shift tap, control shift X to expand, control W. And then now I know when I go to project my history back, I can skip all of these points because these aren't going to project anything. So we have that point in history here. So I'm going to hold down, uh, we're going to isolate this, hold down control shift and then whoop, flip it. And then we're going to say again, project history and then bring everything else back. Let's go ahead and hit, you know what? I'm also going to put a crease along here. Crease, edge of the complete here and here. And so now when I, it'll just keep those nice and crispy when I subdivide. So I'm going to hit control D to subdivide. And then we're going to get rid of this one again. And we're going to say project history. Control and bring everything, control shift tab, bring everything back. Bring everything back. Control D to subdivide. Invert that. Project history. Now we have all of our details back. There weren't a lot, but we got some of them back. And we can keep projecting if we had more detail, but I think we're fine. So now we have subdivision history. We have a much nicer mesh if we want to go through 
and like animate this thing if he wanted to like close his jaw or something or make him smile bigger um, it would be much much easier to kind of go through and do what we need to do without having to you know do a 10 million polygon dynamesh um, did we get all our history back what? I mean it, if you if you're ever worried about that we can always just go back through here and we'll say control D one more time project history yeah we got it back good enough so we have this here here's our original body here and again this head that we're working on kind of goes down here if we want a little bit of overlap with our base body because it's always, it's always nice to have a little bit of wiggle room um, we don't need the hands here so we can say select lasso here we don't need the head taking up space so we're going to say here Oops. hold down alt and yeah the feet we're going to leave because we're going to put shoes on it and then we're going to say delete hidden close holes mirror and weld and i'm going to drop this resolution way down we don't need again a five million polygon mesh sitting in here so 174 is probably fine again just sitting just the body sitting in there to get clothes on uh, is perfectly fine so now we have nice head zero meshed hands that we can zero mesh and project our details back to and wrinkle them up and then body well that makes sense <laughs> it's a little willem defoe luck Ooh, that's some good reference let's do that nice call Daffo. Yes, yes, my pretty. All right, we have some Willem Dafoe reference. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at that. That's going to be good. That's a good one. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see here. Um, get caught up. If I miss anything, I apologize. Cool. Yeah, and you can do a ton of details in the Dynamesh. It just gets a little bit difficult to kind of manage, I think. You know, and then once you get to a certain point, um, yeah, give yourself some nice geometry to work with. Let's go in. Oh, we still have smooth groups turned on. So let's go back here to our regular smooth brush, which is going to be smooth here. And then now we'll ignore them groups. So you can kind of see a little remnants of groups kind of sitting there where I move the geometry. Um, so now, like I was saying, we can we can finally pull to corners here. I just didn't want to have Ziri Mesher doing that for me. So let's drop down our subdivision history. Maybe use another little one. You can turn on polyframe if you want, and you can go through here. And again, we can start making this geometry really kind of overlap and hang down over uh, underneath here. So again, we're going to be looking at that Willem Dafoe reference. So uh, this. We'll kind of go up and in, and the skin will kind of hang over a little bit. So, like so, and then for the eyeballs here, I'll go ahead and pull these corners in just a little bit here. And this, I mean, you you could always like like we did at the very beginning of this stream. You can go in and freeze your subdivision levels and make geometry changes, and then um, it'll project your details back. Or you could go down to subdivision level one, uh, clone it off, make any changes you want, and then project either project history or project all uh, back to where you want to. And now you have these. You can go through and you can mask, and you can actually go through and like pull this down, and it'll give you uh, better wrinkles wrinkles overall like this. So now, you know, if you were to Dynamesh this, this would all be um, this would all be stuck together, but now that it's not Dynamesh, you can really go through here and you can, you know, inflate around things and push and pull uh, things around. Again, just getting caught up here um, gums and teeth oh yeah we were gonna put teeth in here so let's go do that let's go out of edit mode hit control N let's hit 9 quick save and we're gonna hit the comma key and then instead of brushes you can go in here to tool we can pull up 
some other stuff here. So let's hit the comma keys, drag this out, go into edit mode. And in here, I don't need the muscles, I just need the skeleton. So I'm just gonna hide everything but the skeleton here. And in fact, all I really need is them teeth. Control Shift A, Control Shift Alt to get rid of these. Control Shift Drag, Control Shift A, Control Shift Drag, Delete Hidden. Um, we can steal these teeth. And then uh, again, we can put gums around these teeth if we want to. I'm trying to think of an easiest way to do that. Um, oh man, if we had the mask mask brushes that are coming out today, uh, we could do this really easily. Um, but instead, what we're going to do is, you know what? I'm just going to take a custom menu here. We're just going to put in. Uh, I mean, all it is is a primitive, so you don't need a custom menu for that. I was just using mine because it has a simple cube in it with a midline on it. Let's go through here. And we can. Put in some rudimentary gums. Of course, these gums we can go through and we can sculpt around. If we need a little more resolution, we can say, you know what, let's split mass points so we could use our Z modeler brush to insert an edge loop right here and just pull this around. Okay, we have this one. Let's go ahead and say control drag here. And then now we have bottom gums here. And then again, if you want to do a tongue. Might start with the Z sphere. Split mass points. W. Yoink. Let's go ahead and mask this here. Invert. Oops. Invert that mask. Bend it around. You might be like, oh, this geometry is gross. Of course it is. That's why we have Ziri Mesher. Okay, so. Yep. Close enough, right? So let's go in here. I'm going to do a quick merge visible. And then we're going to say, you know what? Delete all. We don't need all that stuff hanging out in memory. Go back to our head here. We're going to do insert them teeth. Hit F to frame everything. And let's see if they're wherever they are. So let's again just do a unify here and move it into place. And now we have some semblance of. <laughs> a lot of teeth here. So I'm going to go. Where is all my. I thought I had some good reference going. And I lost it. And I lost it. Um, one, two, three. Sorry. I'm just getting my. My. Windows working again. All right, good enough. And then we got our Willem Dafoe here. I wish I, you know what, I, you know, this is one of those things where you do, you were ill prepared for a stream and then you spend most of your time off camera um, looking at pictures that no one else can see. Okay, so we got this here. Uh, let's go ahead and, you know what, can we like scale the teeth out along that off axis here? Because X symmetry, let's do it again, mirror and weld. Uh, not that you want everything perfectly symmetrical. I just like to work symmetrically first and then make changes. We can also go through here. Uh, if you wanted to go through, we go ahead and split these things out again. So now it's like, okay, we got the gums here, split hidden, then we got the tongue here, split hidden, and then we got them teeth. Uh, if we want to do upper and lower teeth, we can say you all come with me, control shift A, visibility grow all split hidden and then we don't need even need to do auto group so we can just go in here to move and then turn on topological and you also don't we don't need the roots we don't need any of that so we can go through here and we can slice i'm just going to simplify these teeth a little bit so we're going to take these bottom teeth here delete hidden close holes again mirror and weld and then now we can even maybe even zero mesh these let's say zero mesh double depth size down quite a bit i just want a eh, i guess the same should be fine and depth size down to zero. Just trying to get some simple teeth that aren't just crazy geo. All right, something like this. Now we can hit D for dynamic, and that'll give us a smooth preview. And now we can go through here, maybe even do a slight inflate to get those a little closer. And then if we want to go through and make some changes to this H polish, let's do shifty. You know what? Let's just start subdividing these. 
because we need real geometry. So we have subdivision history in our teeth now. On the inside of these, you know, feel free to go through and how are these teeth are supposed to look. Get your teeth reference out. And then again, what we were talking about earlier, we can turn on topological, and now we can go through and we can move these things independently. You can also do mask, auto mask by groups. Um, but move topological works fine. Okay, and then for the gums here, we have upper and lower gums. So let's go ahead and say you come with me. Again, we'll just hit, uh, let's do this. Let's turn off the smooth modifier first. We'll divide it once, turn it back on, and that'll just kind of maintain that edge a little bit more. We didn't have to do anything creasing or anything like that, but. And this is a special string because usually I don't, usually I don't end up going like super refined into like teeth and gums, but you know what, why not? So now when we're in here, let's take a look. Yeah, Willem Dafoe, you don't really see his gums that much, but we can go through here. I don't like gums look like. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna, initially we're gonna pull down further than we probably want. And then I'm gonna go back in and kind of knock these back a little bit here. And this one, you know, if this is difficult to work with, don't worry about it, just dynamesh that. Uh, oh, that's a little low. Dynamesh that. That's better. And let's hold down our shift key. There we go. I don't have to. I don't have to fight real geometry. But I don't. I mean, dynamesh is real geometry. Don't get me wrong. But I don't need like zero mesh geometry if it's holding me back from getting something done quickly. And then I can always go back in and zero mesh this results uh, better, faster, and easier. So again. Yoink, yoink. And I don't have any teeth or gum reference really, so I'm just kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I guess over here to kind of bulge these things out, move them down. Okay, so you guys get the idea, right? So now, if these teeth ever lift up, <laughs> you'll have gums and such in there. And let's make sure we still got X symmetry turned on. focus on the head. Hmm. Decimate fiber mesh or decrease fiber active points. When you're just making it, uh, you don't do, you do, you say max fibers is low and then you probably need to crank up your, uh, whatever the other control is, the width control. Do I have to save my brushes to always have the smooth groups brush in there or will it save it with the document? It's not gonna save with the document. So if you pull in like, hey, I wanna use, I'm, I'm constantly forever using some special brush in here. Uh, you can open that brush and then you're gonna, like if I always wanna use the smooth groups brush, you can say, hey, grab the smooth groups brush, hold down shift and then go here to brush, save as, and save that into your, um, hold on. ZBrush 2021 20, Z Startup brush presets. You're gonna see in here I have um, Standard O2, a new, my own custom brush, uh, Mass Dev Move Accu, Orbs Crack, Smooth Directional Trim Hole, all these things I want to have come in every time I start up ZBrush. So now when I hit the comment, oops, now when I hit the B key, all those things are already in here. You can assign hotkeys to them. So like Move Accu, I can just hit Alt V and that'll be the move brush with Move Accurate turned on. So that's where you want, that's how you want to do that for custom. Yes, thank you, Pro. Uh, uh, you can decimate fibers 
after you accept, but um, it's going to probably destroy fiber mesh functionality. I don't know if you'll be able to groom after that. It'll just be geometry. Um, yeah, I don't know. Decimating fibers is, uh, is iffy. Cool. Uh, is your mesh quick reach ability? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, let's go ahead and sharpen them teeth. So for example, good call. So we'll go through here, and on this one, we'll go ahead and turn off X symmetry here. We still have, let's turn on move topological for our um, move accu brush. And we'll just kind of pull these things to give them some gnarly teeth through here. We can turn off X symmetry here and we'll those Ferengi teeth. Oh yeah. And then also because when we Ziri meshed it, we took out the points. We'll just add them right back in. Again, I didn't want to have Ziri Mesher thinking too hard about what to do with pointed geometry, because whenever you go to a triangle point, it has to kind of work that into the rest of the mesh. And if you're doing work on something very organic, um, that's going to be a little bit problematic. So again, don't give it too much stuff to think about if you can help it. So go through here. And again, just trying to find some decent ear reference here. So we'll have this swoop around here. And then this is going to kind of, I guess if I had my headphones off, you know what's funny is I don't even have to wear these headphones. There's no, I'm not listening to any system sounds. It's just um, after doing so much recording and streaming and there's like a security blanket. If I don't have my headphones on, it feels weird. So I just put my headphones on, even though there's really zero point in me having headphones on. You know? So again, Willem Dafoe, we're going to kind of take a cue from some of his wrinkles here. So we're going to kind of go here and then we're going to go my standard brush. We're going to kind of, and again, we're working at a very low resolution because again, uh, it's just easier to kind of move some stuff around. You know, we can actually go. His lips are very thick. Let's go into solo mode here and see if we can't. Knock this back just a bit. In fact, we can just isolate this if we want. And again, uh, you know what might be safer if we go in here and flip. Ugh. This gets a, you can do it. You can, you can flip geometry that has sort of in history. I get a little bit hesitant uh, to do it for some reason, because I'm a scaredy cat. It's nothing, it's nothing bad. You can always, you know, if it ends up crashing or something, you can always go back and save often or just grab your latest quick save or recovered file. It's not a huge deal. It's just I'm always hesitant. All right, anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going through here and then we want to uh, go through here and let's go ahead and again, we're kind of looking at Willem Dafoe smiling here and his, and his other stuff too. He's got some nice kind of features going on here. So again, we're going to kind of, again, stay in low first. It's an organic sculpt. We're going to stay low and we're going to move points around if we need to. We're not going to brute force anything just using standard brush if we don't have to. You know, move that topology in the direction you want it to, if you can. He's got some deep, like he, it, like normally I don't, I don't usually see like, okay, we got one here and then we got another one here that goes around this one. And then we got another one even here. <laughs> Okay, and then, uh, yeah, these eye bags here. Let's go ahead and sink these in just a little bit more. 
And if I was trying to do a likeness or something, I would go into, I would bring it into Spotlight or my image planes and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go that nuts with it, but uh, you know, just kind of the the big the big reads. I'm going to steal from him, and then I'm going to take a step back and kind of eyeball it. But again, we're just having fun with this. I'm not going to turn this into a, a, you know, a slog to work through. Okay, okay. And then up here around the brow, we'll, we'll exaggerate this a bit, I think. We'll say standard brush here. And we're going to... Again, these are we're working low, so these are going to be pretty primary wrinkles and folds and direction and stuff like that. So I don't sculpt a whole lot of humans. It actually, feels feels good to get back into it. Um, it's been a while since I've actually made something. Let's see here. I don't have any great reference for this, do I? I mean, I you know the, again, this is a, if eventually it's all going to be covered in clothing, it's not a huge deal. But I can kind of just make some semi-informed decisions here, and you know these things kind of have a, you know, old skin. You know, we're putting some major wrinkles in here, so I'm not going to give him like a Bruce Lee body or anything like that. Uh, but I also don't have any reference for like, in, you know, old man reference. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, wing it. Some sort of collarbone in here. Alrighty. Um, nose is looking okay. So now we've got, I think we've made some pretty decent headway on the primary forms of this bad boy. Uh, we had a wrinkle over the ear, probably. That skin's going to kind of build up. And then we, can, we may even go in here to do a little bit of fiber mesh too. Alrighty, now, subdivision level three. And we'll go through here and we'll just continue. So again, this is where we're just going in here. And for the eyelid, I do want to make sure we do have a, light, a nice ridge for this eyelid. So I'm going to hold down Alt with our Damien Standard brush. And again, we'll just make sure this eyelid has a nice lip to it. And then on the corner here, we'll go ahead and again, hold down Alt. Now we're not into like super tertiary wrinkles or anything like that. We're still kind of in kind of in big reed land. We're just slowly getting more and more built up. So again, I'm just using the Damien Standard brush. There might be better brushes for this in particular, but you know what? Maybe let's try this BS3 slash three brush maybe. Ooh, that's heavy. Let's drop that down a little bit. That might be a little bit more. here and again these are going to kind of get bunched up we've got a bunch of wrinkles and oh we know what we probably lost our poly paint because we didn't have when we were projecting we didn't have our poly paint turned on so that's no big deal yeah i didn't spend a tremendous amount of time on that anyways and if you wanted to texture this in substance paint or mari or whatever you could use your poly paint as a base all right, so we got this here, and then through here. Oops. A little stray stroke there. And once we get to a certain point, I am going to maybe back this off 
and we'll do a um, we'll do a quick fiber mesh pass. And you know what? We'll start blocking in a little bit of geometry. I don't necessarily. I mean, we can go into poor detail. It's, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but. His lower lip is just kind of rounded. It doesn't really have like a hard. It actually kind of flares out too. And his teeth. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, this is this does have a little bit more of a defined ridge here. So we'll hold down Alt here, and then right along the top here, we'll just go ahead and separate that out just a little bit here. And then this is actually going to be stretched for kind of smiling. There won't be a big divot there. And for the nose, I don't really see his nostrils that well in these. So again, make an educated guess. We'll go ahead and just give it a shelf. And we'll curl this back in. did give him some pretty extreme jawline early on. If you ever need to, you know, always feel free to drop back. Let's turn smooth groups back off. We turn that back on. I forgot. Smooth. There we go. Uh, feel free to drop back in a subdivision if you want to go through and make some lower reg changes. Pull that zygomatic arch out just a little bit here. You don't want to ruin any details you've already built up. You're making more primary changes here. This would be the place to do it. And also, let's go in here to a clay buildup brush and let's go in here to stroke. I think I got this from Magdalena. Roll distance of five and then drop this the intensity way down. See so when you're going through here and you're building up your forms. Um, you can also just, just use the clay brush, but you know, building your forms back up around these wrinkles that you put in. streams get pretty boring and that's why I usually revert to let's go and do some clothes or let's make a pipe or let's do something with techniques so I can talk more than just being like mm, using my observational skills on reference with a clay brush for five straight hours I don't know that makes for that compelling of content and then right around here again we're just gonna finish out this level I don't think we'll go any higher necessarily just yet let me go through here. I'm going to use the trim dynamic to kind of push this back down. And we'll go through here. We'll punch this in just a little bit just to kind of, so we have a little bit of lip stuff going on. And then this kind of reminds me a little bit of the biker guy we made. If you all go check this out. This is from our previous live stream. We made the regular show biker guy. Um, but yeah, in this live stream, we did some similar sculpting here <clears throat> but again Damien standard slash three whatever your favorite brush is we're kind of getting in a little bit of a sharper detail here and then skin direction and stuff I don't think we're quite there yet you know where these skin directions will end up going all these wrinkles in here Clay build up or even inflate might be okay. 
All right, so let's talk about fiber mesh. Um, we'll go put some some eyebrows and some tufts of hair on this thing. Uh, oh boy, I'm a little bit behind here. How are we doing on time? Oh, I got 30 whole minutes left. It's plenty. Um, uh, using a base mesh is it cheating? Is training on ZBrush female base mesh a good exercise? Thank you. Uh, Sure, I don't ever sculpt anything from scratch anymore because I'm in production. So if I was to say, I mean, it's good practice if you want to learn anatomy and really, you know, do that a lot, then I would say go for it. But if you're doing it for a job, you're going to have base measures already made for you that have, because the other thing too, unless you're doing a hyper stylized game, if you're doing a fair, even this guy, I could use a human base mesh and snap the verts using Z wrap or um, wrap three, you know, whatever you want to use. Um, to kind of take a base mesh with perfect UVs, jiggle it into place, and then do that for every character in the game so that we can share weighting, we can go through and share texture maps, we can do different skin tones, and everybody's all consistent, and everything's, there's more known quantities. Uh, so yeah, we, yeah, definitely, I mean, if you're just doing stuff, just, yeah, use them. there's nothing wrong, inherently wrong with using a base mesh, obviously. However, if it is going to be like, all I've ever used is a base mesh and I don't know how to make a human. Well, if you want to learn how to make a human, then yeah, don't start with a base mesh. Start with a sphere and then go through and, but yeah, it's not cheating. It's only, you're only, <laughs> you know what they say is, you're only cheating yourself, you know? You know, like when you're, I don't know, I'm trying to remember the last time I heard that, I guess maybe I was playing basketball and you know, if you only run three laps instead of four, yeah, you can get away with it, but you know the whole point of the exercise is to make sure you're you're getting more in shape and you're you're getting to be your cardio. You're doing better cardio, and you'll be able to be better uh, during the game or during practice. So even if you can cheat, quote unquote, and get away with it, um, again, you're only hurting yourself. Now that's not to say that using a base message cheating. If you already if you don't want to know how to sculpt humans, then yeah, then why would you not use a base mesh? If you want to learn how to sculpt humans, and learn how to sculpt humans. Uh, but if you're in a position where it's like, hey, you know what, I want to do a bunch of content, or I'm doing content in a production pipeline, then yeah, don't, uh, you just use a base mesh. It's called working smarter, not harder in that case. You're not cheating, you're just not being an idiot. Then again, if you want to learn how to sculpt humans, you're only cheating yourself if you use a base mesh. Okay. Um, and again, if I miss something, I apologize. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah. And so if you're talking about like learning stuff, most of this stuff, my YouTube channel is all free. There's a ton of stuff on there. You don't need money for that. Um, how to cut out holes like in weird ways to your liking. Um, you can mask and make a polygroup and just delete hidden. <laughs> yeah, let's, okay, Oxford hat. Let's give that. Because, that, oops, that'll dictate where we have hair maybe. It's like a herringbone wool cap here oxford plaid newsboy cap let's do it something like this i'm on board let's go ahead and do that uh so to get a quick base mesh what i usually do is i'll duplicate the head off and i'll go ahead and say delete higher delete lower so i just have geometry to kind of work with hit control w make it all one poly group so you can go in here and polyframe and see what i'm talking about here turn off the line control shift slice curve and we can go through here and it may even be masked or just a masker faster or easier just to mask you know where we want this to go so essentially the hat's going to kind of sit here and then kind of go up and over and then kind of dip down a little bit so that's essentially where this hat is going to lie and then edge loop mask border uh, just to give us a quick cut and we'll go ahead and say delete hidden so this can be the start of our hat um yeah this will be easy enough let's go in here and turn on line and then we'll say zero mesh half to have size down to zero because we do want nice even quads and this will be a nice enough base mesh and you could go through and you could just sculpt you could put plop up you know a, a sphere on his head and you're just fine 
Uh, what we're going to do is I, I hate working on thin geometry, so I'm going to go close convex hole because we're never going to go see inside of here, I don't think. And that'll just be how we start. Now from here, uh, it looks like we're going to need to pull. This is all going to be flat, and then it's going to kind of come out this way, and then it's going to kind of go up. There will be a little um, button. <laughs> I don't know why that was a difficult word for me to come up with. There will be a button on top. And then there's going to be, it's going to kind of fold underneath and then a little brim is going to come out. So let's go ahead and build on that brim real quick. Um, you know what? I'm just going to take this pre-existing stuff and we're just going to move this down. So we're going to say slide edge here. Good enough. And then right along here. I think this brim will come out. And the reason I'm doing this instead of Dynamesh is I'm noticing there's a lot of folding going on that might Dynamesh might not play nice with. So we're going to say Q mesh, polygroup all, and we'll go ahead and say pull this out. And let's go ahead and say transpose polygroup all. And we'll go ahead and take these and we'll just move these down here. So it's going to kind of pop out just a tiny bit here. And these will go in like this. So there's our base shape here. So now the cool thing about this is I can isolate this and mask it and invert it. And now I can pull geometry up and over if I need to and not have to worry about you know dynamesh sticking things together. I can also go in here to my pinch brush and we'll just pinch these down and kind of flatten these out just a little bit. Uh, we can also go through here if we want to smooth these out, polish by features and then just smooth our forms out just a little bit more. We also could have put a crease on these but that's okay. All right so we've got that and now the rest of it's just going to be sculpting and then putting a little a bean on it. I'm trying to see, is there a, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do a crease PG. So as we subdivide through here, it'll keep those edges nice and crispy. And you know what, let's go ahead and help this out too. Crease edge here and here, control D. And you know, now we can start sculpting. Now again, if I want to protect this, I can isolate it and just start sculpting or I can mask it. I can also just go in here to mask my polygroups up to 100. And then now when I'm sculpting on this, it'll leave the other polygroups alone. So I can kind of bulge this out a little bit here. We may flatten this out. Now we've got that little shape here. And now this looks like it actually kind of folds underneath. So we're gonna kind of pull the bottom of this in. And you know what? Now that I think about this, let's undo that. Let's go in here. Well, do I really care that much? Because I'm like, you know what? I could go in there and I could build in a lip on the bottom to make sure it can like go up and in. But if we're not going to see that, then that's probably fine. Um, I'm going to need to see just so I can get this positioning right. Because um, <laughs> right now it looks like a skater. <laughs> Uh, let's do this. They're calling this a newsboy cap, and I'm going to go with it just because uh, I get a few more. Okay, yeah, so obviously this is going to go out quite a bit further, like so. And yeah, that does kind of kind of actually folds in. <sighs> you know, we may resort to just brute forcing this thing because the other thing you can do is you can just brute force it and then Ziri mesh uh, as needed and not have to worry too much about it. I do like not having to, um, you know, worry about. Let's go in here. Let's say you know what. Let's delete higher insert multiple edge loops, keep groups, keep polygroup, and let's go ahead and dial in some more resolution in here. So if I need to, I can push those back in. Because yeah, now that I'm seeing this, it does have a pretty pronounced bulge over here, but then this kind of loops underneath. So we're, we maybe we could just fake it. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, uh, we got this thing here. And from here, this kind of goes down. Oops. That's why polygroup's down to zero. We'll kind of pull this down a little bit here. And it kind of goes like this. Go 
This guy's got a big old noggin. Up to the little bean part here. Now he's looking like a golfer, which is perfect. So now we got this here. I'm going to pull this a little bit further down towards his ears a little bit. Something like this. And then now again, we can go through and it can assign polygroups and sculpt and whatever you want to do. So that's a little bit weird in the back. Do we have a back view? We have a side view. Good enough. And it really just said good. So let's go to a point on the head, doesn't it? What was my wife watching the other day? Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders cap. Alrighty, so we got this going here, good enough. Now we can go ahead and say subdivide. We already got our crease polygroups here. So again, if we want to you know, isolate these things and sculpt, we can. Let's do the opposite of that. Oops. Let's invert this first, control tap the mask. And then see if we can pull this out. Yeah, so now when we sculpt, we can just leave that part alone. And we're gonna go through here. And you know what? We do have subdivision history on everything, but the eyes. So let's go in here. Let's see. BI brush insert clothing. Does it have a little it has a snap assembly? Actually, it's a snap top half is all we really need. And then right down the middle here, we're gonna say split mass points. W, move this down. Let's hit D for dynamic, crease level of two, smooth sort of three. And now we've got some sort of thing here. So now these look like they're manufactured. We could actually build this in if we wanted to. We could go through and like Ziri mesh, like split this up and then Ziri mesh it and get some really, really nice folds. Um, kind of depends on how much effort you want to put in here. I'll leave it up to you. I want that to flare out. And maybe I don't necessarily. I'm trying to get a good read. Okay, so anyway, we got this thing going. Uh, but now we want to also, it's also just go through here and modify this inside just a little bit here. Um, where we want to put his hair. So what kind of hairstyle does a leprechaun have? Let's look up. Images. <laughs> There's some silly ones here. So we're not gonna, I guess we could, we could put on a beard. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, something like this, let's say, <laughs> or like this. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Ooh, or something like that. Eef. Uh... Yeah, that'll work. Okay, uh, anyway. Uh, tablet, did you do? Thanks, man. Thanks for showing up. Cool. <laughs> Tutorial family. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Um, Word it won't be job worthy by an end of my degree. Any tips on progress? Um, I, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I do have. Oh boy, I got so many. Yeah, there it is. Uh, on my R station page, I do have some stuff on my blog here about you know getting your foot in the door and tailoring your portfolio and all that kind of stuff so I'll drop this here um, for what it's worth but you can also do like there's portfolio review places there's places like the rookies that'll go through and make sure you're all caught up and stuff I said long story short just take you know, look at people who have the job that you want to have or are applying for the roles you're applying to and at the companies you're applying to look at their portfolios and just make sure you're as good or better Kind of like when you're running away from a bear, you don't have to be the fastest person, you just need to be better than the slowest one. So if you're better than people, other people applying uh, for the job you want, for the type of work you want to do, uh, and your portfolio is tailored to that, um, that's the best you can do. 
Um, again, if I miss something, I apologize. <laughs> cool. Yes. Well, I mean, hey, if this is useful, you know, watching me do this kind of thing, uh, I'm more than happy to do that for you. I, I find it, honestly, I, more than anything, I find it boring listening to myself talk about using the clay brush a lot, so. Uh, again, okay, let's see. Um, cool. I have planar, can't get the topology how to have planar edges so I can possibly crease my edges. Half regular, half planar head. Um, if you, if zero mesh auto topology isn't gonna, oh, topology flow? I mean, that sounds like a nightmare. Planar to organic and getting topology correct. Hand do it and do the best you can. That's, that's not everything's gonna be super easy. Especially not something that's like a hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, pre-drag, for answering all these questions about nibs and stuff. I've only ever used, I've used a Cintiq and I've used a Wacom and Tools Pro and that's about it. So I can't really give you too much feedback on other stuff here. Cool, cool. Um, and also, yeah, as far as like extras and buttons, I don't use any of it. I don't use touch. I don't use any of the buttons on my Wacom. I have my keyboard over here so I can guess I can show you that too so here you can kind of see oops and I have an yeah I have a keyboard over here and this is an old setup but it's still basically the same so keyboard Wacom tablet monitor uh, and that's basically what I have if you want the updated oops I guess I go ahead and drop this in here if you want the updated workstation stuff, um, here's the, the latest uh, workstation stuff here. So you can check that out if you like hardware stuff. But again, the, the input devices are pretty basic. Is it really hard to get nice apology from something Boolean? When I use Y Boolean, the zero measure is difficult. Uh, yeah, it can be. So one of the things here. And it's not going to it's not going to work um, miracle. You're going to see there is so here's zero meshing hard surface stuff, and I think this has the new, latest one, where you know it will actually detect edges for you, which it has built into zero mesher now. So if you go in here to zero mesh, um, where am I at? Geometry zero mesher. You're going to see uh, detect edges is already built in there. So if you're using booleans and you're not softening any edges. It should do a pretty good job. However, again, it's not going to work miracles. If it's got a ton of detail and it's got a bunch of different ins and outs and a lot of stuff going on and it's trying to resolve this over an entire object, you know, it's, it's, we're not there yet. And here's the scary thing, like we talked about earlier, as soon as, as soon as the machine or as soon as zero measure is able to do perfect topology uh, without any human input, well, well, we don't need any human input anymore, do we? Ah. Cool. Uh, okay, so now we got this. Now we're gonna put hair on this guy. And uh, yeah, we got some hair going. So let's go ahead and put in some eyebrows on here. So let's go through and we'll say mask pin and we'll go through. And we could do stylized hair too with the new ZBrush 2016, if you, to 2016, 2021.6. Um, let's go ahead and put these in here. Uh, but we don't have access to that just yet. So on my Thursday stream on my own channel, I'll do the new new features for that. However, we're going to go in here to Fiber Mesh, and we're going to say Preview Fiber Mesh, and we got some Groucho marks going on here. So first thing we're going to need to do is go in here to Base, and let's give him some of that. Um, or we could actually we could pull from a Poly Paint, but we're not going to do that. We'll we'll do something like this. Max Fiber is way down. So what we were talking earlier about how to you know, not have your fibers go crazy. And on this one too, let's go in here to gravity and I'm gonna do like a negative gravity so the eyebrows kind of sweep up a little bit. Uh, coverage is the one where you can kind of thicken it out just a bit. And also under here, under here under segments, uh, you can crank that up. So now you have a little bit more to pull around. Now you don't wanna do more segments on like stubble or anything like that, uh, but for this, it could be okay. And then over here underneath max fibers, we'll crank that up just a tad. So we got some eyebrows going now you're gonna notice under here in the VPR settings, this will on render um, take it from our profile, which is one, which is essentially just a, a strand. Um, that will go through and give it some weight. 
Um, and while we're doing, yeah, that's fine. So again, you can toss some hair on there and that can be the beginning of what the hairs are gonna look like. Now, I can go through here and I can over crank the length profile just a bit um, so that when we go through, it'll give me a little bit more to work with. And I can always use shift to kind of smooth down where I don't want that length profile to go. But you know what, I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and say accept, no. You can do a faster render if you want to, but I wanna go ahead and just say, nah, it's just so it looks better while we're working with it. BG brush groom hair toss maybe. And we'll go ahead and turn on X symmetry. And we can go through here and we can kind of start. Um, I'm still looking at Willem Dafoe. Now, if I was better, I would have gone through here because the eyebrows, let's do this. Give me a good image here. Eyebrow hair doesn't necessarily just go, eh, it sweeps over to the side. It actually kind of grows in really interesting patterns. It goes up and then it goes down and then it goes down and side. Oh boy, that's some serious brows. Um, you know, so you kind of want to pay attention to that if you want really, really nice eyebrows, which, you know, why wouldn't you want nice eyebrows for your characters here? Let's do bushy eyebrows. Not Halloween bushy eyebrows. Not Kamel. Yeah, here we go. Dennis Healy. Bam. That's what I'm talking about. So that's where you can go through here and you kind of, again, start modifying these eyebrows to suit. Now, again, um, in through here, it gets a little bit sparser. So let's hold down shift to smooth and we can start, you know, kind of removing some length from the sides and the bottoms here. Brush groom. We're just a default groom brush here. You can tell I don't I don't do this stuff a whole lot, do I? Groom length and groom clumps, groom brush one. That seems fine. And go through here and we can and you can also use sculpting brushes. This is just geometry. Um, so you can feel free to kind of just use the move brush and use some turbulent turbulence brushes and some clumping brushes to kind of go through here as well. In fact, there is a groom clumps here. You can kind of go through and kind of just clump some of this stuff together maybe or um, brush spiral element of PQRS. You go through here and hold down alt. You can kind of start making some of these around and you just use your move brush as well. Uh, now you do have auto masking, auto mask fiber mesh brush, which means when you pull, it's going to leave the root automatically masked. So you can kind of use that to your advantage as well. Um, now, as far as the rest of the hair goes, we're not going to see, uh, maybe we will see into the cap. Maybe we want to, you know, swap hats out or something like that. We can certainly do that. So let's go ahead and pop that off here and let's see what time a type of leprechaun thing we want. I mean, he looks completely bald. He just has a little bit of beard. So maybe we'll just... We'll go with that. So through here, let's go back to our head here. And we, again, you, if you want the most control, you can do it in different passes. So we can go through here and we can say, you know, you can do a, a pass through here. It's gonna be maybe all one length, you know, maybe here. We really wanna kinda play around with this length right here. Um, also, another thing we can do, if we like this hair to start with, uh, I wish I would have saved that. Let's see if we go down here to fiber mesh. Actually, if we just do this and hit preview, it should, you know, maintain kind of the same settings we originally have. If you want to, you can also hit save and we can just throw those into our ZBrush 2021 fiber presets. And we can go in here and we can say, so if we want to, we can always grab that back. In fact, you get the comma key. Uh, actually, you can just hit this light box fibers here to go straight to it. And then in here now we have a leprechaun beard preset. We can bring in whenever we, all the leprechauns we're going to make. Uh, now, the first thing I want to do is this one. I'm going to take this gravity and make it actual gravity. And you, the gravity is going to be dictated by where your camera is. So it'll actually just kind of fall, you know, in that direction. But we'll go ahead and say, there we go. Um, good enough. And let's play around with this coverage just a little bit as well. We'll kind of thicken this up. Nice. We'll go ahead and say, That's fine. 
except here and then back to our head here and we'll go ahead and finish this out so we'll have a little bit oops we'll do another round of fiber mesh through here yeah you know what I think that just works except a mask and then uh, right around the ears here we can maybe have Some hair. Now, in this particular one, I don't, I don't know. You could go through here and make stubble, and you can again just drop that uh, segments down and make a really the length profile really short, and make the how many ever many you want. Um, you know what I'm saying? Do that, <laughs> but I don't think we're gonna put stubble on this guy. So we've got this here, and you know what? That's not gonna go that far forward. This is where his hair is going to be. And now this one, I am going to over crank the length profile here. I think maybe we'll have this like spilling out over his ears and stuff. Maybe even a little bit of curl. So we'll go ahead and preview this. Let's go ahead and crank up that length profile here. And we can get this out of the way of his ears eventually too. Let's maybe make the max fibers a little bit heavier since this is a broader area here. And I want to say the twist is for each one. So we don't really need maybe just a tiny bit of twist here. Gravity, a little bit heavier gravity here. All right, I think we're getting close. Um, cool, is it? Uh, you have a 3970X, so you upgraded 3990X. I don't know if I need that much firepower. <laughs> I think this is plenty for what I use it for. Um, see, which hand method do you suggest? Sculpting hands? Same thing as sculpting a face, just grab some good reference and go for it. Is it possible to sculpt with a mouse? Sure, anything's possible. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I have a Discord. I don't remember what it is, though. I mean, I'll look it up. But uh, Zebra's 21.6 out. I tried to update and nothing came out on the 0.6 version. Not yet. Give it some time. Sometime today. Uh, Korean class Zebra's workshop? That I'm not sure about. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, adjustable fiber mesh. Could you get in the settings again and tweak the thickness or something like that? Um, it is somewhat tweakable. Wait, did we preview this? Sorry. Except no head unmask. Um, so, for example, it is just geometry. However, when we made these, we just made, we didn't actually give it segment thickness. So when I go through here, if I did a, an inflate, for example, it would just literally um, inflate these planes because all that's here is planes. Um, you could though, when you make your fiber mesh, you could go through here and you could say, <laughs> put fibers on top of fibers. You could say, uh, instead of profile of one, give it a, like a profile of four and that'll make it cubes. And so now this is actual geometry. So if we say accept, and we go in and we grab this, these fibers. Now when I go through here and I inflate, now you can thicken them up. Because again, it's just geometry. And you can hold down shift and smooth them down. Um, but the ones I have, uh, no, you won't be able to because they're just planes, essentially. In fact, you can actually use this to make planes. Brush groom one. Oops, this one. do this a little bit faster oops <laughs> x there we go so again we'll kind of sculpt this around we'll kind of conform this to the head now if we were doing a very complex haircut you'd probably want to break them into poly groups give you a little bit more control um, i do have a hair process again i don't do a ton of hair and haven't in a while but for what it's worth i need to open up another Another damn window here. So my CGMA class has it right here. So 
essentially, you know, you can make geometry that goes root to tips. You can use IMM brushes that go through and weave. And then you can use like Geodomaya hair, or Maya X Gen to pass curves through that geometry from root to tip and get very complex hairstyles. And you have a, a lot of control and you can make hair cards out of that and bake hair cards and textures, blah, 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 blah. So you can do all that if you'd like. Um, oh, we're five minutes over. Um, someone who has no experience in anything other than CG, but now wants to quit. Um, well, yeah, quit. Um, oh, there's no other experience. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you'd have to, hmm, that's a tough one because you probably might go into an industry where you kind of start over. Um, I mean, I kind of have, <laughs> no, not really. I wish I, I wish I had a better answer for you. If, um, yeah, it's, if it's not really that fun of a job anymore, you know, that sucks. That's not ideal, obviously, but I wish I had a good answer for you. Um, what manual method do you use to remesh the half planar head? You would use topo gun, quad draw, Z sphere, Z topology, um, any, any, anything to basically just go through and plot points manually. Is there a way of setting hierarchy in ZBrush for a mech joint if you want to test them? Oh boy, so if we go in here to my art station page, let me go over here. So I, I do have some some of that stuff like motivation, inspiration, uh, copy link address. Again, this is, there's nothing really here that's gonna be worthwhile, but for what it's worth, you can check that out. But in here, uh, ZBrush Summit 2018, I did a ZBrush Summit for Pixel Logic. And uh, I did talk a lot about, I take it a little bit about that because I actually go through here and I do a lot of weapons previs, you know, where you go through and you set, you know, I like I used to set a hierarchy pivot and then just kind of test out mech placement and joint placement and stuff like that um, and animate them. Uh, but I don't do that in ZBrush. I have to pop it out of ZBrush, but that'd be great if they did. I did request it here. So if you want to check that out, you can, <laughs> I did ask. Cool. One last BPR render, let's say perspective. Let's go ahead and turn on our skin shader here. Let's go into our render settings here. We're gonna go into BPR shadow. Uh, we're gonna turn our shadows back on. And then we're gonna go in here, we're gonna crank that angle up just a bit, drop the strengths down just a bit, crank the rays up here, and we'll go through and we'll do a quick BPR render. Cool. Well, thanks everybody uh, like i said before we'll do uh one last stream um dang it just gotta get my thing out of the way we'll do one last uh, not one last stream we'll do another stream on my channel on thursday we're going to go over to 2021.6 if they drop it today i'll have it available and then i'll on my stream on thursday on my own channel i'll do that and we'll go over the new features but for now here's a little leprechaun guy Willem Dafoe style cool thanks everybody and i'll catch you guys on thursday